Hello Scholar Warriors, good to see you. Today I'm excited because I've driven to come and see my friend Nico Shipchek, former UFC fighter, current Tai Chi uh, master, movement specialist, um, all sorts of skills that Nick possesses. He's an artist as well. And I've driven here to come and see him, to interview him for the second time for the Scholar Warrior podcast. And a lot has happened in that time for us to talk about. So I think we're going to have a really, really good time. And hopefully we're going to get to do a little bit of training as well. And I hope to get some of that on camera. So I'm very excited to be here. And I hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Scholar Warrior podcast. Today we are back with Nico Sipchek, who is a true Scholar Warrior in every sense of the word, martial artist, mixed martial artist, Tai Chi master. One day. One day. <laughs> uh, artist. We can see his phenomenal artwork here. Um, it was a while since our first conversation. Lots of interesting stuff has happened since then. Uh, lots of stuff in the media and lots of stuff with Nick that I think is going to be interesting to talk about. So let's rock on. Thanks for coming on again, Nick. Pleasure. Good to see you again. Likewise. So it's it's worth following Nick on social media because it's good seeing your travels and the stuff you get up to yeah. and you meet some interesting people. And um, one of the interesting guys I saw you meet was uh, this Korean guy. I've forgotten his name. DKU. DKU. If you Google DKU or go onto YouTube and have a look at DKU, there's some interesting videos on there, right? Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. A lot of hits, so he's doing a lot of cool stuff. And he seems to be very fast. Very fast. Super fast. Super duper, super duper fast. Yeah. And he looks like he's inspired a lot by Bruce Lee. Yeah. 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 So... How how does that work? He studied Jeet Kune Do and he's trying to further it. He's doing his own take uh, on it. Yeah, I mean, he studied a lot of styles, and uh, I think Bruce Lee's inspiration to all martial artists. Mm. But he's not trying to be Bruce Lee, and uh, I think he's just he just there's a lot of parallels because of the speed. So you mm. automatically think of Bruce, but no, I think he's uh, perhaps even taking it a step further, and. Uh, yeah, very much what he's about is yeah not not subscribing to any one particular style, but you know he's big on meditation and uh, is he? yeah big big on meditation and standing practice, and I think that is what he says is the secret to his speed. So standing practice is is Jan Jong a form of qigong. Yeah, I, see that's not something that I knew at all. I didn't know he even talked about meditation or qigong. I just see a lot of videos of him moving really really fast yeah. and doing one inch punch and um, three inch punches and knocking people flying so yeah. that's a major part of his thing is it yeah massive so massive. where does that come from is that from Yichuan or Chinese martial arts yep uh, he went to China when he was young he said and he learned uh, standing practice uh, a lot of his meditation is coming from India he says he's got a teacher out there mm. so you know he's just drawing from all sources and then I saw a video of you holding some pads for him or something or yeah. he held no, pads he held pads for me and right. uh, I got invited along and I jumped at the opportunity right. and uh, yeah you know just by being around someone that is really good at something and just seeing them or whatever you pick up a lot yeah. so uh, I'm always going to jump onto those opportunities and uh, yeah it's good to do a few tricks here and there right so um, so what did you learn? Uh, how to be faster basically yeah. and uh, how to you know it's because I also 
uh, meditation and standing practice are my main things as well. It's nice to hear someone right. else that's doing that and getting the results, and uh, it gives you a little bit of a, a boost. Right. You know, it can be lonely at times <laughs> doing that stuff, and you, you know, your mind plays tricks on you. Right. So you're like, all right, good, I needed that. Let's get back to it, kind of thing. Right. So, so, in, okay. So we're talking really about standing, standing meditation, qigong practices, which can be like holding a ball or yeah. having your hands down here or in some other position. Yeah. And the original point of that is to develop, uh, well, in terms of martial arts, at least, is to develop skills favorable to martial arts. Yeah, yeah. Or um, qualities. Qualities, I'd say, more than anything. So aligning structure better, learning about your yourself more, and mm. uh, releasing tension. And you found that pretty pretty formative. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not something that is common. No, it's not common, and it's no surprise really because yeah. you've got to be a certain type of person to be willing to put yourself through that kind of training. Because yeah. you know most people just won't. Most yeah. people don't train full stop. So yeah. to train in a way which uh, can be considered boring to many people. Yeah. And you know, people are going to shy away from it, but yeah. to stand still for twenty minutes or whatever, yeah, it just go over most people's heads. The, the first time I experienced uh, Dan Zhong, you know, whole three circumstances was in China, and I was uh, twenty. Yeah, and I went to a place uh, where they were doing it for a minimum of six hours a day. Yeah, that's what we were instructed to do, and. Um, so I was 20 years old for a start, yeah, so I'm full of, deep end. yeah, yeah, and I, and I, I, I like to do physical stuff, yeah, yeah. and um, to, it was beyond boring, I mean, it was, it was, it was like torture, yeah, basically, because there was nowhere to run away from your thoughts, yeah, and I would be having thoughts like, I'd be standing there, you know, trying to go through this mantra, Maru Jung, that soft expansion, warm, and I'd be thinking about what you know Johnny Briggs did to me in like year, f- year four or something. I just couldn't escape. Yeah, the, like the mental noise. Yeah, which is a great way to uh, kind of learn about how noisy our mental formations can be and yeah. how frequent and how much we attach to them and all that stuff. So you're did learning. you did you have that uh, when you started? Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. still got it, you know. Mm. It's, it's, you always got it. It's just, can you tune it down a bit? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that's one part of it, but then there's also the feeling the body part, mm. and uh, that's a distraction in a way, but it's also a goal, and a, you, you're applying your concentration and your intent and everything, so it's not just about clearing the mind, it's about taking your awareness to different parts of the body and, and getting them to release and relax and let go. So there's stuff you can be doing. But right. certainly for most people, especially six hours a day as a 20-year-old, the first thing that's going to slap you in the face is, uh, this is, uh, I don't want to be doing this, I want to do every, anything but this, yeah. and yet I've got to stay here. So yeah. it's that noise that will be hitting you. So, so, so people should not be, first of all, this is, a, this is not, it's not a highly known training method as far as I'm aware. I mean, probably in Kung Fu it is but well, Kung Fu, yeah, yeah. nowhere else I, I don't think so I mean yeah. there's probably yeah there would be other styles which use it but I think you know Kung Fu you're, you're definitely going to find it I haven't seen it in any really in any other martial arts apart from Chinese martial arts but I suppose the place where most people would have seen something like it would be a Jackie Chan film where he's in a horse stance yeah and he yeah, can't move and he's is. got something on his head yeah and you just keep this position that yeah, kind of thing. and that's pointing towards the direction. But I think in those films, it's portrayed you know low stance, and it's more about physically working out right. the legs. Mm. Whereas you know it doesn't have to be low at all. Yeah. It can just be not knees it unlocked. Can, right. And then uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's not so much about how much it's killing your legs. Yeah. It's just yeah. You know, it and it's not a form of torture. Yeah. I mean, there you can see it's it's used as kind of like a punishment. Yeah. Sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, it's not that. It's not that. Um, so that's really fascinating that you met that guy. So do you think, uh, uh, what's his name? DK Yu. Do you, DK Yu. Do you uh, think you. you're fa- you? Do you think you're faster now? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Can you one inch punch? Uh, I would say I one inch punch differently to him. Right. Uh, you know, but then again, you know, when you're doing an exhibition or seminar, Mm-hmm. you're showing something in particular to a particular yeah. crowd for a particular reason mm-hmm. you know you've got the one inch punch where you're trying to push someone really far back 
but then you've got a more penetrative type of power where it all goes into the person. It might not move them back at all, but right. they feel it's all gone into them. So there's different approaches to it, but yeah. obviously, you know, it looks more spectacular to throw someone back a few feet. It gets you some good hits on your yeah. videos as well. Yeah, it yeah. looks really good. I mean, you see them in those seminars sending people flying and stuff. Yeah. Um, so, another big thing since the last time I spoke to you, I, I obviously I met you in the time since, but there was the Tai Chi MMA fight, which oh, yeah. was a comp- debacle, which was... Uh, well, that was a while ago now. That was a while ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. What, 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 was, what did you think of all of that? So I think most, if anyone, if most people watching this are interested in martial arts, they would have seen the Tai Chi guy who challenged an MMA guy in China and it, it, was, it was like a political problem, you know, yeah, for, for big China. Time, big time. Because it was, you know, this Western style martial artist smashing traditional Chinese martial arts, basically. Yeah. But what, what was your thoughts on it? Uh, well, I wasn't surprised at all the way mm. it played out in yeah. terms of the actual fight. And then I suppose I wasn't surprised either about the repercussions afterwards, you know, the mm. political side, as you said. But really, yeah, that's not an area I spend much time on these days. So, you know, too busy to be following all that stuff. And right. uh, at the moment, my main thing isn't well. I don't compete anymore. Yeah. So and I don't get in any altercations, or I'm not beefing mm. with anyone. So I've got <laughs> not any interest really in it. So right. watch the fight. Okay, no yeah. surprises there. Next thing, I know. Right. So obviously, I mean, I I'm a Tai Chi guy. I see value in Tai Chi Chuan. Many people will watch that and think, "What is this nonsense about?" I mean, what what are they doing? I mean, did you think that guy was an act, was a Tai Chi exponent, or do you think the, do you think people now have got? Uh, I mean, uh, do lay people have a different idea of what your idea of Tai Chi Chuan is because of that fight? Probably, yeah, yeah. But I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every ninety nine percent of the Tai Chi community will have a different opinion of what Tai Chi is compared to me. Right. So, so can't please whatever the time. They can they can think what they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, another thing I saw when you know in your in your Facebook page was there's the Aikido guy that you were helping out. Oh yeah, yeah. How how's so yeah, so we what's his name? Because he's he's Rokas. he's got some good videos. Yeah, and yeah. he seems like a very honest guy. Yeah looking to improve yeah and he's doing great things because it's not just Aikido that are having these problems yeah. there's a lot of these traditional martial arts which are just kind of you know they've just moved away from the true path because of whatever reason afraid to train properly the hierarchy the, mm. the mysticism whatever so he just had enough and uh, recently I saw actually he had put a video out saying he's left his class or oh, school, his school uh, because yeah he's just wants to just do it himself you know just start off scratch let's, let's see right. what let's, let's just train what I believe in not just because someone's told me something so this guy was Rokas Rokas and he's an he's an Aikido guy and his 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 MO is that he wants to see how Aikido will work practically he wants to train realistic stuff yeah so has he moved completely from Aikido now? Uh, no, he still teaches Aikido and likes Aikido, mm. but he's moved away from the school he was affiliated right. with okay. and from doing things the way they've been doing it for ever how long. And then I saw you were giving him some coaching online. Yeah. That was very cool, and I think people should know about that if they're, you know, if they're watching. Yeah. Because you had him, he was in a dojo with yeah. a mate, yeah. and you were saying, okay, drill this. Yes. And then you're saying, well, no, try this differently. This this will work better for you. Yeah, because I didn't want him to think, uh, like, all those years spent training, I've gone mm. to waste. You know, there's still mm. some stuff which can be used. You've just got to work out how to make it useful. Mm. So it's just one or two small changes to put yourself in a position where you can then use the thing you've been training all those years. Yeah, and he and it worked. Yeah. It was working for him. Yeah. And then I saw he went and did a... A grappling competition and he managed to get a wrist lock on someone oh, or something. Did he? I think he got oh, like a cool. wrist lock takedown or something. Oh cool. <laughs> it's quite funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, really great. Yeah. Really great for him. Yeah. So that I think that's a, a pretty good success story. So you know, if if you are a traditional martial artist and you want to level up or something, you can drop you an email yeah. and get some coaching from Nick. <laughs> or he'll come round to school and sort you out. <laughs> um, no, 
these are some other things that I saw come up was um, one thing that I didn't know about you actually was uh, the, the the middleweight fight a while back when, when George St. Pierre came back and fought Michael Bisping yeah. and I read your blog that you'd sparred with both of them yeah, yeah. that's really interesting Bisping more than GSP a right. lot more than GSP but I still got to spar with both of them so it gave me a unique insight into how I thought the fight would go so I mean obviously Bisping is just amazing so so hardcore I mean uh, he's been fighting for so long yeah yeah a long time now I think he might have been retired but he's trying to get one more fight out like a lot of them do right but, squeak uh, one more out yeah yeah and That's he's cool. got that crazy eye yeah it's just one one eye isn't it it's like black or something yeah so you sparred with him a lot um, I guess when he when he first was you know when he's established himself he's more, more more of a Muay Thai guy uh, kickboxing yeah traditional Jiu Jitsu okay uh, they were I think his background right and so I can't did you call the fight I mean did you did you no, did you make any predictions no 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 I just gave a few likely scenarios right I left it open ended and but did you have a did you have a feeling either way well yeah I thought uh, if GSB came back to competition uh, you know on point he would win right and I think that's what happened on point as in like you know not a shadow oh, oh, of right. his former self but right, right. ready to fight in shape in, in shape in, in condition there yeah yeah he did it and I mean uh, he just he followed that age old his, his age old plan really which was timing take down yeah and jump on him but he yeah. managed to get a submission yeah striker was looking good though up until that point mm. uh and yeah he got a stoppage which was one of the main criticisms from his previous few fights that he wasn't being aggressive enough and stopping right. the opponent um, so what was your experience of sparring him when was that uh, it was in London maybe like what year is it now 2018 and that would have been somewhere around 2010 2011 right. so 6 or 7 years ago and how, how did that go well we only got a round of sparring in and he kept taking me down very easily right. and that's what impressed me most because there was no fight there you know it was just right. you know, I, I was getting a bit of the stand up and but he could take me down at will right so normally well, there's, a, there's a fight going on to defend the takedown but right. he was just quickly his timing was so good you know oh wow so then he gave me some pointers afterwards explained what he was doing and stuff like that but yeah it always stuck with me because he was a cut above the rest Right. And you know his coaches say the same thing. They've seen him do that to not just the best in the world right. at his weight, but in the weights above him, more than one weight above him. Right. So he's uh, just taking people down whenever he wants. Yeah. And do you? Uh, I mean, okay. In the sport of MMA, is that? Do you think is that the 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 pivotal skill? Who can control whether it's standing or not? I think control full stop is a pivotal skill. Right. Uh, but if you're because it's sport and the way it gets scored mm. I think if you can score a few takedowns in one round it's hard for the judge not to give you that round right and if you can score a takedown and then stay on top mm. then again it's hard for them not to score you that round plus the opponent is going to be where, uh, using more energy carrying your weight generally than you are lying on top of them right so you've got gravity on your side so what, what was the magic tip what was it uh, I think it, how is he taking people down at wheel obviously it's timing but yes what sorry. is he waiting for what is he looking for I think it's just he's waiting for you to commit moving forwards and he's coming underneath you right but a lot of that comes from his understanding of the forward and back from karate right and so as soon as you start coming forward he's coming in as well and meeting you right. coming underneath you right okay but the particular takedown he showed me was because uh, he was catching me with a single leg which is where you just two arms on one leg mm. and he was taking you one way and then quickly the other way right. it was just a little bit more subtle than most people drill it right okay very so he, as soon as he was impacting me yeah. I was straight away going to my default defence defence and, and he, he cut was quickly right and cut the other way yeah okay and, no, and difficult to stop yeah impossible well there's ways of doing it, stopping it, yeah. but in that one round of five concept. minutes, you right. don't normally Gotta adjust that, that quickly. You know what I mean? Right. Very interesting. Yeah, that is phenomenal. I mean, to to have that experience sparring with both of them and yeah. have and have that insight and 
Yeah, both amazing. I bet he was a gentleman as well. That's Absolutely. What he, that's what he yeah. strikes me as. Real martial artist. That's what I really like about I think that's what a lot of people like about him. He's a real martial artist and it's not, you know, I, I, he would be training if he wasn't fighting, I think. Yeah. And he would be working on perfecting himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And very clever guy. Yeah, very admirable. Yeah, yeah amazing. Um, so, a couple of other things that I want to talk about, which I think are very interesting, and that is, uh, well, we've got your artwork here, if you didn't know, it is your amazing artwork, and I want to talk about that a little bit, because I know that you've got, you've got something coming up where yeah. people are going to be able to get access to your art, yeah. but the other thing I want to talk about, because I keep seeing it, and I keep hearing it in the press a lot, is this CBD oil which you're producing. <laughs> Come on, that's got to be cool. <laughs> Tell us about CBD oil because uh, I know that I've been reading a lot about it and it seems like it cures everything. Yeah, so CBD is taken from the hemp plant or in this case the hemp flower. Yeah. And uh, it's got great healing benefits because it works with our body's endocannabinoid system which was only discovered by science in the 90s so it's relatively new that's why most people haven't heard about it so we have a cannabinoid system in the body a yeah. system that picks up this plant not just this plant okay our body can produce cannabinoids <clears throat> but not that effectively and it can come from a few sources i believe but the most the best source of it is the hemp plant right okay so so the, the cannabinoid interacts with our endocannabinoid system and the function of that system is to regulate homeostasis in the body. So it basically means balance. Yeah. So whatever is out of whack, top up your body up with some cannabinoids, organic preferably, and then uh, all the cells in your body improve their functioning. The organs, everything is just more, more homeostasis. So some people are too stressed, it helps chill them out, some people uh, have let's say skin problems because the hormones are out of balance helps bring it back so it helps harmonize you effectively yeah. Yeah, yeah which sounds quite similar to to um uh, so take for example the benefits of deep breathing deep meditative breathing exactly. which stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system yeah which lowers the cortisol uh, yeah. and increases testosterone and then increases the blood flow yeah. around the body which is a good idea for any problem that you have. Absolutely. Basically. Yeah. So that sounds very cool. Yeah. And so you've been using that for a while. I mean, I've known about this stuff for years. Uh, you have known about it for years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, you know, the laws change have come into play more recently. Right. So beginning of this year, January the 1st, it became, uh, they were removed from all the sporting banned substances list okay. before it was just getting lumped in with uh, marijuana they right. heard cannabis plant must get you high this right. doesn't get you high right. it's, got, it's non-psychoactive it's uh, deemed completely safe completely non-addictive yeah. and uh, my product I actually infused it in coconut oil because the CBD is fat soluble mm. coconut oil is high in healthy fats so it binds together you eat it it goes into the liver gets into the bloodstream and uh, it's the most powerful way to take it so you you were obviously looking into stuff like that as you were a professional athlete. Yeah. You were looking in ways to, yeah, to I had recover. To, I had to research nutrition a lot because my diet was important to me. Also, yeah. I had the weight cuts. So I was mm. having to manage my weight, uh, sometimes quite drastically. I also wanted to fill my body with the best stuff I could. Mm. So I was reading a lot, learning from other experts. And then, you know, it pointed me towards plants at the end of the day and of all the plants that's the best for CBD right and it's, it seems quite strange that, that obviously cannabis is I mean you know, is an illegal substance in terms of people using it for recreational uh, use or yeah. you know maybe less so now but it's not exactly performance enhancing is it uh, it depends it depends you know if, it, if you've got anxiety mm. and that makes you perform badly Right. And you take some of this and it chills you out and you perform better, then it could be deemed okay. performance enhancing. Right, okay, that, that could be the case with uh, those Diaz brothers, right? Yeah. I mean, they're pretty highly strung. Yeah, because it's also, uh, it does pain relief. Right? right. So you might be able to take more hits without ah, okay. thinking about quitting. Right. <laughs> Enjoy the process of yeah. getting beaten yeah. <laughs> in the head. So that is some very cool stuff. And you, ha you have a company that's producing this stuff and people can buy it. So where do they buy that? 
uh, everything is linked now through my main website, RaySpirit.com. RaySpirit. The art, the uh, mindful movements, and the CBD. So you can just mm. go there. Go there and get yeah, it. Yeah. Go there and get you some oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm really yeah. interested in that. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll set up my own farm as well. Yeah. Um, so that is very cool. Um, the other things I wanted to talk about were we would we just did some training. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, it was good. It was very, very good. <laughs> it was it was so nice to get out in the countryside. So first of all, I want to talk about why train in the countryside. Yeah. Why? Well, train anywhere, first of all, is yeah. good. Okay. I prefer always to train outside when possible. Yeah. You know, we spend enough time indoors and, uh, you know, just like this uh, product is, is bringing some nature into you. Mm. Well, you can get that same thing from just being outside, you know, being by the trees, being breathing the fresh air, being more by the wildlife and all that stuff. So it helps put me in a better state of being to get more out of the training. Mm. Plus, it just chills you out generally. So, especially if you've got kids like we do, young kids, you, you've always got a, a, I try and get a lot of drama as going as on. Can. Exactly. So, get outside. Why not? Yeah. And as we were walking up there I was saying I also do the same thing I try I try and I try to get into the countryside every day I'm quite lucky because I'm basically in it but I try to get out of my office and walking and I always get a lot more perspective and like I was telling you I feel like an ant you know if I can get onto a big hill yeah. and see you know the, the magnitude of the land I feel very I feel a lot smaller but not in a bad way I feel quite good because then my my issues seem like they've reduced down in size. You know, yeah. something that was quite big in your head. Yeah. And you get out and you have a look around. Yeah. yeah, you get a lot better perspective. So then we did some training. We had some push hands. Um, well, you, you can push me around wherever you like pretty, <laughs> pretty much. And that was, that was pretty good fun. And <clears throat> yeah, you, I've, I mean, you're, you're a pro fighter. You feel strong you know agile and you know you could you manipulative and all that stuff um but then yeah you felt very relaxed yeah. i think you felt a lot more relaxed than quite hardcore external fighters than i normally experience you know they're normally quite and they're sometimes a little bit kind of you know in that stressy kind of nervous system when they're trying to do something does yeah. that make sense yeah definitely. Did, definitely have you experienced that of course of course and uh well, my background was in poker, and that gave me some experience with trying to stay calm and not get emotionally uh, attached to whatever I was doing. So yeah. I quickly realised there was benefits to that, and you know you can't perform the internal martial arts in that uh, tense state. No, it just doesn't work. No, so you, it relies on you being relaxed, and uh, you also got to be present because you're adapting and adjusting on to each micro moment. So. If you're angry or whatever, or fixated on something, you're you're becoming attached to trying to do something in particular, and you're not going to be able to adapt as quickly. Right, and there's there's got to be. I mean, I know from my own experience, there's a lot of benefit to bringing that into your life. Yeah. I mean, if you can keep a little bit open, uh, even when the 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 situation's ramping up. Yeah, yeah. Totally. As it were, you can you can still pivot. Um, we did some. I mean, so I asked her, can you show me some techniques? Is there some techniques that you like? And you're like, it's more about an internal skill that I'm trying to manifest than a technique, pretty much. Is that, was that accurate yeah, to say? Yeah, the techniques are like secondary and they mm. can be expressed in many ways. And, uh, you know, it's more about, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a quality rather than a technique. So, so you don't, you don't go into uh, some kind of encounter with an intention specifically in mind. No, no. no. I mean when you it, if you when you say encounter, I, I generally always have intentions on the go. But if mm. I'm not not, I don't even get involved. I don't even spar anymore, right? So right. if you're talking about physical encounters, mm. then no, I don't. But mm. you know, if I was going to get in one, yeah. I probably would have an intention <laughs> because I'd want to. You'd want to win. It's it's, it's too. Uh, yeah, I would want to win, but it's too specific for each moment. Right, right. It's, still, it's to do with the context. Who, where, why, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that was interesting. You showed us a you know, great 
great idea about sidekick, great idea about uh, haymaker, great idea about the, the, the takedown. And then I like your idea, which, you know, your, your suggestion, which is it depends what you like, you know, it yeah. depends what your skill is, what you want to do afterwards. Yeah. Um, and that was quite nice as well. Yeah. So I could see that, I could see that your approach can work with anyone, anyone, anyone's skill set. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it you doesn't can matter. You improve whatever martial art you're already doing. Right. And, and like you said, you've been working with some karate people and, and stuff, but is that to do more with movement? Based. it's all linked it's all linked yeah. because the reason I am able to teach movement is because I practice my Tai Chi stuff so yeah. you know it's my, I'm moving using the Tai Chi principles right so you can move better in any sport yeah. if you're employing those principles right so so a golfer comes to you you can you got some stuff for them yeah absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so it's any kind of physical physical discipline, uh, not just physical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah. so so what about you know um, a stressed out entrepreneur comes to you? You've got yeah. something for it. If you're going to pump some of this into them a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you, look, let's say you were talking about going up on a hill, getting some perspective, yeah. right? So if you're stressed out entrepreneur which mm. I put myself in that category all the time <laughs> you know sometimes you're so fixated on your project you yeah. you lose the woods for the trees yeah. so just to have someone ask you those simple questions like why are you doing this what mm. is your what, what is your goal in one year what is your goal in five years mm. and then you, they come in oh yeah yeah I've got to restructure the way I do things and right. just become more efficient at it and, right. and so enjoy it more as well whilst you're doing it just remember at the end of the day if you're not enjoying it it's pointless so Right. Sometimes you just need that reminder, which we all, we all need. Yeah. yeah. So, so you see that that organizing the structure in your body. You see that you, you know you can organize the structure in your life as well. That's that's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You think they're, they're connected for you? Uh yeah 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 I think so. Yeah. Because you know to to align your structure physically, you're releasing tension, right? Mm. So you're just it's becoming more effortless. Mm. So if you can align your lifestyle that the same way, mm. then you can. What is your what is what would be your suggestion for dealing with difficult people? Difficult people are just triggering uh, things inside us, right? Yeah. That's why I'm. Someone might be in this room right now, and you might not have a problem with them, but I might have a problem with them, yeah. and that's because they're reflecting something in me. Right. which I'm not comfortable about so mm. I would say you a use it as a opportunity to work out what it's triggering inside you mm. and so that's an internal process right you're no longer concerned with oh it's their fault it's their fault it's their fault you're like oh okay what's going on here contemplate it and, mm. and find out what is, is triggering in you and why it's triggering in you resolve that and then you can be in the same room as them and they can still be as annoying as they were before <laughs> to the to an outsider, yeah. but mm. it would affect you in a different way. So Right. I so would you say. would you would look in, inwards first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look look at the fault that so you think typically difficult people are triggering triggering something in you which well, is there's more value yeah. in trying to control what we can control, right. which is ourselves. So mm. and our reactions to things mm. and the use it as feedback. So I would say it's better off doing things that way. Yeah. If you want, to, <laughs> if you want another way to look at it, I would say um, don't be around that person. <laughs> yeah. Right. Till you're ready for that, you go away. You go. Right. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to go back there and see if he bugs me again. Right. Have you tried that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Because otherwise, you can't just hide from those problems forever. No, you can't. You can box yourself in this tiny little corner and you'll be in a, in a dark room on your own. Yeah. So you've got to constantly use it all, all the feedback as testing. It's like you, you train martial arts, you go into the competition, there's your feedback. Go back mm. to your dojo, train. Yeah. So it's the same thing in everyday life. Test it out. Yeah. Look inwards and test it out. Mm. Um, okay, I wanted to ask you one more technique. Yeah. Sorry, one more question about technique before we talk about your. No, there's two more questions actually. I want to ask you about uh, Tai Chi and martial arts before we talk about your your art. Um, so I was gonna ask what your favorite technique is, but I can see that that's kind of pointless. So I'm gonna say, what is your favorite skill? 
that you possibly are working on at the moment or that you're trying to acquire? Well, it's very simple for me. It's just trying to uh, improve my ability to release tension in my body. So it's an ongoing thing and you can never just get it. It's Mm. only a scale. So constantly working on that. So letting go of tension in the body. Yeah. That's the that's the one at the moment. Yeah, that's the skill. It's been like that for like two years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, and it's moving along. <laughs> well, got along. It's, it's a it's, it's a, it's a like lifetime. Fifty years or whatever. Yeah, I'm doing the same thing. It's, it's a been, lifetime of work. Yeah, yeah, which is enjoyable. Yeah. Um, okay, what does good Tai Chi? Again, now now I'm going to say, what does good Tai Chi look like to you? But then maybe it doesn't have a look. Maybe it's got a feel. I don't know. Yeah, it depends. Are you talking about in martial arts sense? Let's say martial arts sense. Okay. So and it, then we can go lifestyle sense or something. Uh, in martial arts, it looks like a boy trying to fight with a man. Hmm. So uh, the boy can't doesn't have enough power to do anything to the man. Hmm. That's how I'd probably describe it at the moment. That's that's what it looks like. But the guy, the but the man isn't necessarily wielding power. He he, he just looks like everything's controlled. Um, it's just right. Let's say I was to fight a lion today. Yeah, mm. that lion's not really gonna be phased about me. No, he's gonna rip your head off. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't have to rip my head off. Right. He can just play with me if he wants. Yeah, because I can't really hurt him. Right. I can't really hurt him. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like a different different level of power. Right. Okay. That's uh, yeah. So that's what it looks like. Um, anything else? Any other ways you'd like to describe? Yeah, there's loads of ways I can describe it. Um, it depends how, you know, wh- which angle we're approaching it from. But let's approach it from life. Life. What does Tai Chi look like in life? Yeah. It looks like following the Tao. So mm. um, doing nothing but achieving everything, kind of thing. Like uh, effortless enjoyable living harmonising with nature and uh, but also letting your your spirit shine forth so you are you are embodying your archetype what is your, so does that mean when we say archetype do you mean what, like a hero's journey kind of thing or could be yeah yeah or the archetype of the martial artist or well, it depends depends what your archetype is yeah right but uh, or scholar warrior yeah exactly so like we got kids yeah and you gradually your kids get older and you start to see a little bit more about who they are and how mm. their personality differs a little bit from their sibling and then you want them to show that off more and more and more and you know when they're, sh- they're feeling confident and they're showing it off mm. and they're being themselves and you know when they're not feeling so good and and uh, whatever and they're shining away a little bit or whatever mm. so it's just yeah how shine bright basically shining bright <laughs> yeah shining brightly um, before I ask the bonus questions tell us about this art you, you're, you're going to have a, a yeah I'm doing an exhibition, an exhibition. 24th 25th of this month of this month which is February, February yeah and that's in Oxford Oxford International Art Fair Oxford International Art Fair yeah, so that's going to be my first major exhibition. Excited about that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, so I'm, yeah, selling off mm. some paintings. This is going to be one of them. You must be. This is going to be on sale. Yeah, and uh, all my art is based around sacred geometry, mm. which uh, is ties in with everything else I do. And you know, each one helps me learn more about the other. But it's basically about geometric patterns, which are you know, one way of describing sacred geometry is. It's the study of these fundamental patterns which our universe is formed of and they're fractals so they occur at every level mm. from the micro to the macro and that is beautiful thanks it's very satisfying stuff to look at it yeah. feels like I don't know it's almost like you can consume it with your eyes do you yeah. know what I mean it's like a, it's nourishing it resonates yeah. us as well yeah. yeah I mean some art you look at and it, it gives you a hard time <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah but this is it's satisfying yeah it makes you feel comfortable yeah, yeah. and they're not they're, like, they're nice they're really really nice thank you so yeah you need to go along and check that out if you're in Oxford or anywhere or anywhere else near yeah. or 
wherever you are if you're in South America go <laughs> for it say hi yeah. <laughs> Oxford's easy to get to it, it, oh Oxford's amazing it's beautiful around yeah. there it's beautiful okay bonus questions yeah you ready um, what do you think when you're driving in your car depends <laughs> okay <laughs> where am I going why am I going you're going to the supermarket am I in business mode when I'm in business mode you know I'm setting my intentions you mm. know Mm. I'm getting my mind right for the business meeting yeah. something like that mm. maybe I've been doing too much business thought so I'm trying to use it as a opportunity to just follow my breath for a bit mm. without crashing yeah maybe yeah not holding your breath <laughs> yeah <laughs> that makes you drive very quick yeah driving uh, yeah I mean I, I'm someone that personally 20 minutes drive is enough for me yeah. one hour's a maximum after that I'll get a bit bored but uh, yeah, it depends on where I'm going Okay, uh, Spider Man or Batman? It's a big one. Don't mean to disappoint you, but I'm not a oh, superhero person. I'm glad you said so, that. Uh, I don't like either of them. Superman or Batman? Wonder Woman. Superman. Superman. He wasn't even on the list. He wasn't the choice. <laughs> oh, well, it's Spider Man. It's Spider Man or oh, Batman? Nah. I choose. Sp- I choose Superman. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just, just redirect from the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, last one. Um, What's inspiring you at the moment? Uh, the feedback I'm getting from the CBD oil. Mm. Every single day, you know, someone is messaging me, mm. saying how it's improving their lives, you know, mm. whether they've been in pain and on painkillers, they can't sleep, got skin conditions, whatever. So when I get, when I'm feeling tired, mm. I get a message like that, I'm like, okay, they give me a boost, I'm like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Very it's, cool, yeah. man. Yeah. CBD oil. Yeah. Nick, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. That rocked, and I'm really glad we got to do a little bit of training as well. Yeah, Until the cool. next time. Hey, before you go, I just want to say thank you so much for watching or listening to this podcast. We really appreciate it. I'm trying to spread the idea of the Scholar Warrior concept, and we really appreciate you listening in. If you want to uh, like us and subscribe to us, please go ahead, do that. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And if you want to follow us on social media, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. If you want to hear older episodes, you can go to thescholarwarriorpodcast.com and you'll see older episodes there as well. Hope you enjoy those. So thanks again so much for listening and watching. Please like, share, subscribe and see you next time.